Hey, what's up you guys? It's Judy here with My Life as Geek Eye. On this channel, I create videos on product reviews, makeup tutorials, and lifestyle advice with the aim to entertain, educate, and enrich the lives of others. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Today's video isn't makeup or a product review. There is a slight possibility it does fall under the category of lifestyle because for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my experience growing up as a homeschooler. Now, I just want to put a bit of a disclaimer out there before I begin. This is my experience and it is simply just that, my experience. In no way, shape or form am I implying that this will be someone else's experience or this will be your children's experience if you are looking around or planning to homeschool them. In fact, I feel like this experience of mine actually would be quite unique because not everyone will be in the same exact circumstance that my family, my siblings and I were in. My objective and my hope with sharing this part of my life and my story with you, my YouTube family and my subscribers is that you'll get to know me a little bit better and maybe understand a little bit why I am the way I am. Because my upbringing definitely played a role into shaping me and molding me into the person that I am today. Also, homeschooling 20 years ago here in Australia is in no way, shape or form the same as what it is today. It wasn't recognized or supported here in Australia like it is right now. So if you're a parent watching this video, maybe trying to decide whether or not you should homeschool your kids, you should know that there are limitless amounts of support and tools and resources that you can very easily access here in Australia today. So if my story sort of scares you or discourages you in any way, then don't feel like that because this is just my experience and it's not all bad. Just like everything, everything has its pros and cons and how I came out of my upbringing feeling might even vary from how my siblings feel about their homeschooling experience growing up. Like it might even change how they feel about homeschooling their own children. So this is a very individual feeling. I'm not speaking for anyone else. I'm just speaking for myself. <laughs> my childhood and my upbringing is actually a little bit of a touchy subject for me and I don't talk about it very often because that's a part of my life that I have learned from and moved on from. I've taken the good that I can from it and tried to leave the bad behind, leave the negativity behind because if you carry on any baggage or any negativity you have from your childhood then what's the point of turning into an adult because being an adult means that you can mature and grow into a better person, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I don't talk about it a lot because, you know, growing up was tough. Growing up at the best of times for most kids is tough because that, you know, you're, you're discovering yourself, you're discovering life, you're discovering, trying to decide what you want. Throw my childhood into the mix and to put this gracefully, it has made me a strong person. It's made me strong mentally, it's made me strong emotionally, spiritually, I mean physically, I mean, you know, that was all me. Mm. Yeah, that's all me. <laughs> Before I get any further and talk about any more, I know my parents are probably gonna watch this video and I know other parents will also watch this video and I just wanna say right off the bat, how I feel about my childhood, my upbringing, is in no way, shape or form am I trying to imply any negativity or bitterness or resentment in the way I was brought up. My parents loved us kids. I know that they did the very best that they could at the time. They 100% did what they could with what they knew at the time. They did their best. I just want to say that I love my parents to bits. Everything is a learning curve. What you do with your situation and your experience is up to you. So I just wanted to say that. I just wanted to make sure that I put that out there that I in no way, shape, or form resent my parents at all for any of this. Okay? Now, <laughs> with all of that out of the way, let's just get into it. Without boring you and going into too much detail, basically my siblings and I were born here in Australia except for my eldest sister. She was two months old when my parents moved here to Australia from the Philippines. My two older sisters had a chance to go through a school system until they were grades one and two, something like that. And then when I came along, that's when my parents decided to go along the route of homeschooling. So my sisters were pulled out of school. 
I was started off with homeschooling from the very beginning. It was fun, like, you know, the first few grades, it's all basic foundational things. My mom was actually a preschool teacher in the Philippines before she and dad got married. So she had that experience and that qualification to teach younger children. So starting out, my mom did really well. And through those years, a lot of people, when they think homeschooling, they think, what about socialization? What sort of interaction do your children have with other children? Well, at the time when we were living in the city that we were living in, we were still going to church every single Sunday. So we would go to church, we would interact with other children, we would go to Sunday school. And living in the city that we did, we were living close to all of our family friends that we grew up with. Filipino gatherings, if you're a Filipino watching this, you'll know what I'm talking about. Filipino gatherings, all the parents come, all the kids come, you have a lot of food, you, you stay all day at this one person's house, everyone has a great time. So. My point in telling this is that growing up as very young children, we were not deprived at all of socialization. As a young child, it was very easy for me to make friends. You know kids, they, they just go along and play with someone, that's it, you, you make friends. And then, <laughs> when I turned 8 years old, my parents decided that they wanted to buy a house. So, because they hadn't actually bought a house, before this was going to be their first home that they ever purchased they couldn't afford anything around in the city that we were living in so they looked further and further out and eventually they found a property that they could afford out in the countryside so it was a good hour hour and a half away from the church that we were going to away from all the people that we knew all our family friends people that we grew up with so when i was eight years old we moved out to the countryside it was in a tiny little rural town there wasn't really much going on there we didn't really get to know anybody in the town so from when i was eight years old to the time i was 20 basically I lived in this tiny little rural town with my parents and my siblings. My parents had four more children, so there's seven of us all together. That's not seven. That's seven. <laughs> we lived in this tiny little house on a 10 acre lot on the top of a hill. It was a little two bedroom house and we didn't have a lot of space. So that's just a little bit of a backstory to our homeschooling. I think up till the time I was eight years old, I was actually doing fine. And the curriculum that we were using at the time, I found quite easy to understand and I was doing fine. I mean, it was like grade one to, I don't even know what grade eight year olds are doing. <laughs> And from what I remember, around the time that I started to struggle with my my education and my academics was when I hit around grades 8 or 9. And I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't think that I did any studies that surpassed the grade level of that of 8 or 9. So when I hit that grade, that level of academics, I was starting to struggle. At this point in time, my mom had four younger children, so she was very, very busy. She didn't have a lot of time to teach us one-on-one, -on -one, and I think because it was at that grade level, she really had had only experience with preschoolers back in the Philippines. So from what I remember, I was just doing my studies, doing what I could basically, and just trying my best. I remember feeling at this time that school was kind of pointless because I remember doing my assignments, doing my studies, and then we would actually grade and check our own work. We had the school book and then we had the teacher's manual. So once we did our school book work, we go through with the teacher's manual and check our work and make sure that we'd done the right answers and from there we would grade our own work. Now that I'm saying this out loud, it sounds so wrong. I never really talked about this <laughs> um wow that's wrong anyway um i remember math books that we used it was a curriculum called sex and math all of the books that we used was american curriculum so whenever we did monetary values the measuring system anything in math terms it was all in american terms and then one day i remember thinking what's the point of this because if i'm adding up dimes quarters half dollars nickels, pennies, if I'm adding these things up, and we live in Australia, I remember thinking, what's the point of this? And then I remember thinking, wait, no, I shouldn't think that way, so this will still relate to real life, because I'm learning multiplication, math, division, basic sort of thing. I remember when I first hit my absolute basic algebra lesson, honestly, I could not tell you, for the life of me, any basic algebra methods 
terminology, any of that sort of thing because when I hit that first algebra math lesson, that's when I remember giving up. I just stopped doing school basically. And this was around the time when in this country house that we lived in, we were very sheltered and excluded from the world, extremely excluded from the world. I remember not leaving the house for months on end. This was also around the time of our lives where we didn't go to church. We didn't even have that one Sunday to look forward to, to meet with other people, interact with other people. So yeah, we were very secluded. At this time in my life, I didn't have very many friends. In fact, um, yeah, I didn't have any friends. So I remember thinking, I need friends, I need something to do. If I'm not studying, then I need to at least write letters or something. So I wrote into this, um, I'm trying to think of the word storybook magazine sort of thing anyway i don't know what it's called where people would write letters in and they would get people write back and say hey do you want to be my pen pal anyway i wrote into this my letter actually got published and being an american publication all of the responses that i got back were from other american girls and from a very specific church group. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Mennonites or the Amish or those sort of groups, but these were all the people that I was interacting with at the time. I'm trying to keep my story very narrowed down to my homeschooling experience, but there is a whole lot of other stuff that we were into, my family was into, that I was into, that doesn't relate to my homeschooling experience. So basically, this church group of Mennonite girls that I was interacting with. These were the people I was writing to. Eventually, my pen pal list grew to about 60 people. I didn't really end up keeping in touch with most of them. It sort of petered out through the years, but there were a few that I really kept in touch with. So instead of studying, doing my English studies, math studies, oh, and by the way, those were the only two subjects that I ended up doing. I didn't really study science. I think I studied the first two th or three grades of science, history, and health but I didn't actually go any further than any of that. I basically did math and English grammar, English literature sort of thing. And that's the extent of my education. So instead of studying, I was writing to these people and I actually, until a few years ago, I actually had a whole stack of folders full of letters and I don't know why, but for some reason, I actually kept photocopies of the letters that I actually wrote to these people. I'm gonna try to find one of these folders. I'll be right back. All right, I found one of these folders. I, I don't know actually why I kept this. I threw all of the other ones out, but this is the one that I kept, I think simply because um, this is the one that I actually kept photocopies of scrapbooks that I made and sent to some of my friends. Keeping up with 60 pen pals, I wasn't doing any of my English or my math studies, that was it. I remember trying to justify in my mind at the time that my letter writing was my education. I was writing proper English, I was writing a lot, and I was handwriting them. Like this is just one page of one of my letters, I was handwriting all my letters. I don't know why I kept photocopies of this, I'm just one of those people who just likes to keep copies of everything that does not always play in my favor i have gotten into a whole ton of trouble in my life because i kept copies and wrote things <laughs> and that's a whole nother story in itself if you guys enjoy this sort of story time i know i'm like random in the middle of my story but if you guys enjoy this sort of story time please give the video a thumbs up i want to know if you guys enjoy this if you do i will tell more stories about my life if you don't let's just forget about it <laughs> So yeah, anyway, I would write pages and pages. And you guys, this folder is just one of 10 that I had. It was a whole stack of letters. And I, I don't know what happened to all those letters that I actually received. I think I got rid of nearly all of them. I think I kept very select few letters. Also through this time, I was reading a lot of books. My dad is an avid book collector. He actually collects a lot of old 1800 books, like the old, old style books with the gilded edges and the pretty covers. That's what I did in my spare time. I would write letters and I would read books and that is all I did. That's basically <laughs> the extent 
of my homeschool education, I didn't really go any further than grade eight or nine. Now, there are some questions that a lot of people ask us because we're homeschoolers. Some of them are jokes, some of them are just actual genuine questions. Now, remember, this was homeschooling 20 years ago and people didn't really know what it was about. It was strange. Back in the day, everyone would go to school and we were that one weird family living alone in the countryside all by themselves and I remember there was a time when I didn't leave the house for four months straight. I remember waking up one morning and thinking surely there is more to life than this than living at home all the time never leaving the house. So that was the extent of our homeschooling experience. Any further experiences that I had growing up further were probably more life experiences because like I said that was where I stopped studying. Any further education experiences that I may have had was when I sent myself to TAFE. I saved up every single dollar that I had and sent myself off to TAFE to study a trade because I was at the age where I wanted to do something with my life. I wanted to get out of the house and get a job. I wanted to work. So the long short of that story is I started working full-time when I was 17 years old. And I've been working full-time since then. I have I have just gotten on with my life. I've always known what I've wanted and I've just gone for it. There are questions that people ask homeschoolers and I'm going to answer some of them because I have a few of them written down here and I'm just going to answer them honestly and openly with what I know from my experience growing up. So question number one, pajamas all day. Did you guys wear pajamas all day? Well, sometimes I did. Sometimes I would think, well, there's not really any point getting dressed today because no one's gonna see us. We're just gonna be at home all day. But my mom was a stickler for having bed clothes and then day clothes. So we weren't really allowed to stay in our pajamas all day because mom was like, bed clothes are meant to be clean. If you wear your clothes outside, then you you shouldn't wear those dirty clothes to bed. Does that make sense? So no, we didn't always wear pajamas all day, but sometimes we did. <laughs> Question number two, do you have any friends? Well, growing up, we didn't. Towards my later teenage years, we found avenues where we did actually get to make friends, but it was all still in a very sheltered sort of secluded bubble. So making these sort of friends was a very difficult step for my family to have does that make sense it was it was weird it was strange so a little bit later on in my teenage years we found another church that we could go to we did make a few friends in that church um but i'm no longer friends with anyone in that church i have completely cut them out of my life question number four that we got do you have a school that you go to well basically the school that we went to was home homeschool so no we didn't have a physical school building that we went to our school was the dining table we would do our lessons for the day and then we'd put them away uh, number five how do you play sport we didn't our physical activity was going outside we had a 10 acre backyard so we would go outside we would do rock collecting bird watching we, we had a little dam that we would go to and catch some yabbies <laughs> so that was the extent of our physical activity no one in my family is very sporty at all probably the greatest extent of sport that i have ever done in my life is dance sport after moving out of home i went into ballroom and that's probably the extent of sport that i've ever done in my life but i didn't do any sport growing up as a child uh, question number six if you're homeschooled then you must just watch movies and play games all day long. Um, well, for one, we didn't have a television. Not even the internet, not even video games, nothing like that. Our amusement was books and books. That was about it. Sometimes on the very, very rare occasion would watch the one movie that we had and we'd watch it like over and over and over. We read a lot of books and in case you guys are thinking that I'm an extremely uneducated person, I'm actually very, very intelligent, okay? You've seen how I write. I can write, I can read, I can do basic math. But I mean, really, in the real world, where would you use algebra? I mean, you tell me. Alright, question number seven. Are you allowed to go on the internet? I think I sort of answered that in the last question. We did not have internet growing up. Now you try and wrap your mind around that. Anytime we needed to write an essay or a book report, we would go through our Collier's set of encyclopedias. Have you guys seen that? Like, I don't think anyone uses a book encyclopedias anymore because like this is our encyclopedia now. Like you type a question, the answer comes up. But no, if we had to do any research, we had this whole 
I think it was a 30 volume set of encyclopedias and we would go through that and do our research and write our essay or assignment from that. So no, we did not have internet. <laughs> How were you socialized? I think I pretty much answered this in my story part of this video. We were sort of socialized. Throughout the years that we were living in the country, we made some friends with other homeschooling families and occasionally, maybe about once every six, five, six months, we would have this massive homeschooling family gathering. They would come to our house and sometimes we'd go to other people's houses. Most often it was us that organized it and they would come to our house. We would have a massive, massive lunch. Like each family probably had about five, six, seven kids. One of those families actually has 11, 12 now, I think. I'm still friends with a lot of their older kids in that family. And we'd all come and then we'd have massive lunch and we'd have a good time, you know? We would have a really good time and that was our socialization. We would catch up with our homeschooling friends maybe once in a several months span. Question number nine, is this a religious thing? Homeschooling for a lot of families isn't a religious thing. I think for a lot of families it might have been. For my family, it was. It was definitely a religious thing. My parents decided very, very early on that the education and the upbringing of their children is solely their responsibility. It just didn't work out very, very well educational-wise for us older children. Now, I did mention I have seven siblings. I feel like for us older three girls, the homeschooling part of our lives was a little bit of an experimental stage because there are six, I'm the third eldest, there are six years between me and the younger set of kids. So I feel like for the younger set of kids, my mom sort of had a better idea of homeschooling and I feel like she did a little bit of a better job with the younger kids. My two youngest siblings are still at home being homeschooled, but they are in a whole lot better situation now where they have socialization, they have out of home um, programs and interact with other kids. Question number 10, were your parents qualified to teach the children? I did say before my mom was professionally trained as a preschool teacher before her, her and dad got married. In that way, my mom was qualified to teach children. She had had experience teaching preschoolers, but I think as we got into the high school age, that's where I think she started to struggle because that's around the time where I started to struggle with my own studies and I didn't have the sort of support that I probably needed at the time. Question number 11, were you behind with your studies? I think I very, very eloquently answered that question. <laughs> question number 12, well, it's not really a question, it's probably more of a surprise statement. A lot of people say to me, you are so outgoing for a homeschooled person. My answer to that is always, I believe that my personality was my saving grace. My two older sisters are a little bit more shy and introverted. I, in a way, am introverted. I think all of us have a little bit of that yin and yang in their personality. I don't make friends very easily, but my personality is very outgoing. So I can easily have a small talk conversation with someone, but I will not go out of my way to really, you know, make a coffee date, catch up with someone, unless I actually really feel like they're my friend. Does that make any sense? Yes, I'm outgoing, but I believe that that's my personality. I also believe that a lot of that is some shit that I've gone through in my growing up years that I've just learned, that I've just dealt with on my own. I have learned to overcome and rise above these situations where other people have talked bad about me behind my back, basically kicked me out of church. I got kicked out of church. <laughs> Something now you know about me. Um, so basically I think that I am outgoing because of all the shit that's happened to me in my life. It is how I handle it. It's how I have gotten stronger and just learned to deal with negativity in my life by not dealing with it, basically. That's all the questions that I have here right now. Homeschooling pros and cons. Would I do it myself? Telling the story, you know, a lot of these things that I have just spoken out loud, I didn't realize how bad our situation was as kids growing up. Not bad, just not ideal. Does that make sense? Like. My childhood wasn't bad, but it wasn't ideal either. We were very, very sheltered, very secluded. My parents were extremely strict when I was a kid growing up. They are a whole lot more calm the f 
down now and like I said my parents were doing the very best that they could at the time. As one after the other of us seven kids grew up, they learned how to handle the growing up stages a whole lot better. For me, would I do it? I would absolutely homeschool my kids. But having said that, I would only homeschool for the first few years. But my parents were on the right track when they were of the mindset that the growing up years are crucial. The growing up years of your kids are crucial. Now, this is only my opinion. I'm not telling you what you should do with your own children. That is completely up to you. For me, personally, even with my own homeschooling growing up experience, I would absolutely homeschool our children for the first few years. We would absolutely make sure that our children have a good, solid group of families and children that they can inter interact with. Like I said, homeschooling now in this day and age, we are so blessed to have the resources and the tools and the groups and the support. You know, if we wanted, if we just went out and found it. So yes, I would absolutely homeschool our children for the first few years, but going into the high school years or even like grade school years, we would absolutely look into sending them through a school system. Pros of homeschooling. My siblings and I are incredibly close. All of my siblings are very morally grounded and I believe a lot of that has to do with the upbringing that we have. Your upbringing inevitably shapes you into the person that you are today. I always make a joke to people saying that I raised myself. To an extent, I feel like there is a little bit of truth in that statement because when I was in the growing up years, mom had the four younger kids to look after and to take care of, which my older sisters and I did a lot of that as well. Helping raise them, feed them, clothe them, bathe them all, you know, even with their studies, we helped. We call them the younger batch, the second batch of kids. <laughs> we feel like they have a better chance in life than we did growing up. But at the same time, I don't resent it. It is what it is, you know, that's my outlook on life. Anything that happens, happens. For me, the reaction that I have to my upbringing and my growth as a person is up to me. I'm now an adult. If I still hold on to little resentment or grudges that I had as a teenager, being sheltered, secluded, not having the friendship and the support that I probably really needed at the time, if I held on to that resentment now, I would be an extremely bitter person. I would hate the world, basically. I cut negative people out of my life because I just do not have time for that kind of shit, you know. I, I do not have time for negative people. You just don't deal with them. What is my point in all of this? <laughs> I think what I'm trying to convey to you is that I don't hate my upbringing. Sure, it was hard. It was actually really, really tough. But having said that, I've come out on the other side of it a very strong person. I believe that I'm strong because of my upbringing. As being in such close proximity with my family and my parents, they have instilled in my siblings and I an extremely strong sense and standard of honor, respect, responsibility, not so much frugality. I think money has always been a struggle in my family, but for me, I still learn from that, learning what not to do. Does that make sense? So in every situation, even if it's negative, if it's positive, you learn what to do. If it's negative, you learn what not to do. If your experience with something is negative, then don't think, oh, you know, this has ruined me for the rest of my life. No, you can learn from someone else's mistakes. You don't make the same mistakes. I think what I'm trying to say in all of this is that I don't regret growing up homeschooled. I think if my parents knew what was gonna happen in our teenage years growing up, then they would have done things differently. But like I said at the beginning, they were doing the very best they, they could, how they could, at the time they were trying their very very best it sounds harsh to say but sometimes your best might not be good enough but at least you tried your best you know does not that make sense i think as a kid growing up i didn't actually realize at the time how unideal my situation was because we were in it you don't realize how bad of a situation might be until you are you know far away from the situation you're someone on the outside looking in and now i realize that it wasn't ideal we weren't getting the support the socialization just the normal mental support that we needed my sisters and i needed as teenagers growing up we didn't get that um nurturing that's the word that's the word i'm looking for we didn't get the nurturing that could really only come from socialization with other people and i think a lot of that is what i was missing in my childhood growing up so basically i like when i said before i feel like i raised myself i think i pretty much did i feel like i feel like i did whenever i would share how i felt as a teenager when you just you just feel so many things whenever i tried to convey some of those feelings i was made to feel that it was wrong, it was sinful, any of these feelings that I might have been having like 
if I felt like I wanted to explore and have a bit of freedom. It was like, no, that's wrong. That's a sinful feeling. You need to obey your parents. That's the sort of teaching that we had as kids growing up. So I think it was a little bit constricting of my mental growth as a teenager. So anyway, this that has nothing to do with my education. Anyway, I think my, my story basically stopped when I said grades eight and nine was where my education level stopped. But anyway. <laughs> Also, you know, growing up, my parents were extremely what people would call religious. Like, it's not a term that my parents would use, like, say, oh, I'm religious. They had a very, very strong belief system, and they instilled a lot of that in us as kids as well. We had Bible study, you know, every single night, or at, at a very least, five nights a week, we would have Bible study. I don't embrace every single tiny belief that my parents do now, but I still have my faith. I believe that is a very crucial part of a person's growth. Well, it is in my case anyway. Having faith, having something to believe in is a very integral part of being able to find peace in yourself as a person. If you're a teenager watching this or even an adult struggling with some childhood difficulties that you had growing up, like I'm not gonna say that mine was a worse situation. There are always worse situations out there, but this is my experience and this is how I feel about it. There are times years ago when I would struggle with feeling resentment and feeling like why did you know why did my parents do it like that or why did we not have friends why were we so secluded and sometimes felt made to feel like we weren't allowed to have these sort of friends because oh they're a bad influence but at the same time I feel like it is what it is you know this is my life, this is what's happened to me, and my life right now is what I'm making of it. You can make good out of a bad situation. There are a lot of people who blame who they are today on their childhood. There are a lot of effed up situations out there where that may be a very legitimate excuse, but for me, I can't blame any flaws or imperfections that I might have today on my upbringing because now I'm an adult. I am fully responsible for my own actions. I am responsible for my own happiness. I cannot, I can absolutely not rely on someone else for my own happiness. I'm responsible for me. This has all gone into some whole tangent but I feel like it's all connected, you know? Anyway, what I'm basically trying to say is this is my experience. I don't regret it. There are bad times, but they make you who you are today. For me, I believe I'm a stronger person today because of how I grew up as a homeschooler. So that's it for my story, guys. If you did enjoy it, please give the video a thumbs up. Please subscribe before you leave. I upload videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Turn on the notification bell if you do enjoy my content so you don't miss any future uploads that I do. Thank you guys so much for watching. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time and being here and listening. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so beautiful. No, you'll break my camera. Mm -hmm.